Welcome to the summer series of Make Movement Matter Minis with me, Wendy Welton. In a break between seasons of the usual interview style podcasts, I'm sharing a few short episodes to jolt your thinking and offer you a few practical suggestions to move more in your daily life. I really hope you enjoy them. And if you do, please share them with others. Follow for more. And I'd be incredibly grateful if you could rate and review the podcast to help me reach more people and spread the message about the importance of making movement matter in all our lives. So on with the episode. Welcome to the second mini podcast episode where I'm going to dive into the fascinating world of our incredibly important foundations, our feet. I'm particularly passionate about this topic because learning more about the role of our feet in our whole body movement and then transitioning to minimal footwear had a really significant impact on my recovery from injury and chronic pain. Today, I'm going to share some foot facts and some practical tips about our feet that highlight their importance for our overall movement health. First of all, why should we kick off our shoes as often as we can and go barefoot? Here's my foot fact number one. The soles of our feet have the most nerve endings by area than any other part of our body. This dense network of nerves sends critical information to the brain, helping it decide how to make our body react to the different surfaces we encounter, whether they're slippery, hot, steep or bumpy. The more information our brain receives from our feet, the better our body can adjust and the more quickly. So my first tip is to try to optimise that brain-body connection. Spending time walking barefoot on various textures and temperatures is a great way to improve that connection that may have been dampened by years of only wearing shoes. Push yourself to try walking on gravel, rocks, grass, sand, and even the snow. Remember, the use it or lose it rule applies to nerve endings too. Regularly stimulating these nerve endings keeps them active and responsive. And for the second fun, well, no, the first fun fact, about a quarter of the bones and joints in our entire body are located in our feet and ankles. They are crucial to achieve the best stability, balance and adaptability we need. The more our feet and ankles can adjust to different terrains, the better our overall balance and shock absorption can be. So, top tip number two, the more natural movement we do, the better. Walking barefoot as much as possible allows our feet to move more naturally. Massage your feet, roll them on spiky massage balls or tennis balls, do foot stretches to encourage more movement if they get tight or uncomfortable. I always unshoe when I get home. In fact, I can't wait to get my shoes off when I get home, even though they're minimal shoes. Letting your feet breathe and move freely helps them maintain the flexibility and build strength in your feet. So, fun fact number two, the movement of our feet directly affects the movement of our entire bodies. If our feet don't move well, it can lead to pain in the knees, hips and lower back due to lack of mobility in the foot or specific foot problems. And many modern shoes crunch our toes together. They've got hard soles that stop that natural articulation of the feet and certainly don't allow us to feel the ground with those nerve endings I mentioned at the start. And mostly they have slight to large heels that push us out of alignment in our entire body. So we're sort of toppling forwards as we walk and the backs of our bodies are having to strain to hold us up against gravity. So. Top tip number two, consider trying a pair of minimal or barefoot shoes as they're known. With no difference between the back and front height of the shoes, more flexible thinner soles and wide fronts of the shoe, it's called the toe box, that allow the toes to spread as they naturally want to. In fact, they allow your feet to move as though they're not in shoes at all. If transitioning to minimal shoes feels like a big step, Start by making a rule to always go barefoot at home and see how that feels. This simple habit can have significant benefits for your foot health. And if it feels okay, then perhaps start by wearing some wet shoes or barefoot sandals to use as light alternatives to carry with you whilst you're out and about so that you transition, but you always have your normal shoes to go back to. Finally, 
here are a few more ways to show your feet some love. Our feet work incredibly hard for us and we often take them for granted. So why not think about a lovely foot handshake? So this is where we are helping to restore the space between our toes by counteracting the squish of unkind shoes by taking our digits of our foot and interlacing the fingers of the opposite hand in between each of the toes. See how it feels and then have a good rock and roll through that foot, bending the toes and just seeing how it feels. The mobility of those joints are, is key and that can really help to allow more movement into that area. Secondly, think about maybe investing in some toe spacers. They do the same kind of thing, but they do it with less effort because you don't need your hand there. So you can actually wear them as you move around the house and when you train. They do have some effect when you are sitting passively, but obviously to get the most impact and, and particularly on mobility of those joints, it's better to be moving. As I said before, massage, get a lovely spiky massage ball, maybe not too severe at first, or even just a tennis ball and gently roll your foot side to side, forward and back, and just find those points in your feet that might be a bit uncomfortable. Walking barefoot, as I said, and thinking about trying to do that even more outside as well. And finally, stretching those calves. Calf muscles are doing a lot of work. They call it the set, call them the second heart because they're really pumping the blood back up into your heart. So we really need to have good, strong calf muscles. Um, they're also really important for stabilizing um, us as we walk. They're the connection between the feet and the rest of the body. So allowing them to have a nice stretch twice a day I do it when I'm brushing my teeth in the morning and night on a foam half dome, which please feel free to ask me uh, what I use, um, is a great way to just add in that lovely stretch for the whole back line of your body every day. So incorporating barefoot practices into your life can lead to remarkable improvements in your movement health. From optimizing that brain body connection to ensuring better stability and movement, taking care of your feet really is essential. So let's give the feet, our feet, the love and attention they deserve. Unshoe, walk barefoot and embrace the natural movement that our feet were designed for. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the world of barefoot living. And remember, happy feet leads to a happy body. I hope you enjoyed this mini episode. And please press follow on Apple, Spotify or YouTube to make sure the next ones pop up as soon as they're released. If you'd like to hear more about how natural movement could benefit you, then head over to my website, reclaimmovement.co.uk and sign up to my newsletter or to have a more thorough introduction to all the ways a natural movement lifestyle can improve your mobility, strength and confidence. Then my five day introductory course, Move More Naturally to Live Better, is for you. You can find all the details on the homepage. If you have any thoughts or questions, you can always get in touch with me at reclaim.movement on Instagram or email me at wendy at reclaimmovement.co.uk. See you next time and don't forget to just move.